Hello, welcome to today's edition of Pegasus Test. On today's edition, I'm covering the gear I used during the HESCO Zombie 3-Gun Invitational of 2020. Alright, let's get right into it. First of all, sorry I'm late getting this video out uh, for reasons. In other words, life happens. It's what it is, what it is. Uh, I normally like to get these videos out right at the end of the competition, as soon as we post all the stages, but sometimes life gets in the way, and I do apologize for that. Next thing we got here is the vest that I used. You might recognize this if you watch my videos from the previous uh, zombie shoot in 2019. And it's the Blackhawk shotgun rifle vest. Two shotgun pouches here holding a total of 28 rounds. Three rifle mag pouches here holding six 30 round AR magazines. It's a hard combination to beat. If you need a good vest and you have a situation where you're using rifle and shotgun, I highly suggest you consider this. I've had this vest a long time. Matter of fact, so long that the sides on it are using paracord instead of uh, nylon webbing like they do now. But that hasn't reduced the utilitarianism of it at all. It's a great vest. It's a good investment. I suggest you consider it. All right, here's the remainder of the gear that I used. Let's start at the top and work our way down. So I used just a nylon web belt with a Cobra buckle as my pistol belt. It functioned really well for that. Um, for magazine pouches, what I did was on the um, first day when it was rifle pistol, I put the pistol mags over in the shotgun pouches. Uh, that seemed to work out very well. On the second day, when I needed those pouches for shotgun shells, I actually was, run, was running extended happy sticks uh, for my Glock, and they just worked in the AR pouches just fine. Um, also, one of the requirements you were uh, to have in this competition was a knife, and I used a K-Bar. It is not a real K-Bar by any stretch of the imagination. It's made by USMC, but it's not by the real Marine Corps. And this knife actually started to come apart on me. The sheath started to come apart, but as you can see, green duct tape to the rescue. The um, snap doesn't hold it in place, or it doesn't stay snapped all the time. And you'll notice a ton of green tape here on the hilt, and that's because the pommel came off on one of the stages. Luckily, I found it, just taped it back in place uh, so I could continue on the match. Another piece of gear I used was Eagle Industries dump pouch. This came in very handy, mainly because one of the reasons is it has three shotgun loops right here. That was a good place to store some of the slugs that I had. Now, my pistol I used, the Zev OZ9. Pistol functioned great. It was awesome. It's like a Glock turned up to 11. Uh, we'll be doing another video on the OZ9, but just imagine if the SIG 320 and the Glock had Love Child. This is what it would be. It was a great pistol, performed excellently. I had the Hollow Sun Red Dot on. and Delta Point Pros, mainly because it uses an EOTech type reticle. One of the problems you have with a lot of red dots is you still need to line up your sights so you can find the dot and then engage the target. Uh, with the EOTech style reticle and the hollow sun, no, the sights are not that issue. You don't need them to be able to find the dot. I found it to be the next evolution in the red dot, in my opinion. Moving on, I used a Franken rifle. Um, uh, 300 blackout and you might say why 300 blackout well ammo shortage didn't want to use up all my 556 in a competition and this is a franken rifle uh, it's got a uh, barrel I got from classic firearms um, main overriding consideration in the selection of that barrel was price um, it's got a Troy hand uh, M lock handguard on it this is put on a mag tactical lower which is a polymer lower, and I know a lot of people cringe, but it's held up just fine. It has not been a problem in any way, shape, and or form. The rifle functioned flawlessly throughout. Any problems I had were magazine related, not uh, the actual firearm itself. And I've got the Viking Tactics VTAC sling on it, Magpul uh, MOE Plus grip, uh, Magpul CTR stock, and the Sig Sauer Romeo 05 XDR. This is a red dot sight that either has a plain red dot or a EOTech style reticle circle dot and it's powered off one AA battery. Uh, it gave great service throughout and several people came and checked it out and were like yeah I've used that sight it's really really good. Um, 
Rumor has it, can't confirm it, that it's really just a hollow sun under the SIG name, which is, if that's the case, that's great. It's a good sight. Next down in my piece of gear is just a plain old shotgun shell bandolier. I did not wear this Pancho Vila style, but what I did is I kept it in my backpack because that was one of the requirements of the competition. You had to have a pistol, you had to have a knife, you had to have a rifle, you had to have a shotgun, and you had to have a backpack. And you had to carry everything you were going to use for two days in that backpack. And the bandolier in the backpack made a really good way that, uh, to manage the shells. I could hold, in the kel you see there, I could hold 14 shells and I had another 28 on my body. And I was able to put two complete boxes of shells, so 50 shells, onto that bandolier. And that meant that once that was empty, then I could go into my other boxes and reload the bandolier. And that went a long way towards keeping the shells together and not getting all over the pack and having to rummage around and find stuff in there. So that was super convenient. Moving on, the Keltec. Uh, Keltec served me well. And we're going to do a full video of this on, on this particular uh, shotgun in the future. So I won't go too in-depth right now. But uh, mainly it served really, really well. The Vortex Strike Fire 2 sight that's mounted on top was excellent. Helped me a whole lot making the slug shots that I needed. Um, it was also made for fast acquisition when I deployed this shotgun. And if you watch the series on the 2020 HESCO Zombie 3-Gun Invitational that I'll put a link at the end of the video to, that you will find that the only time the kel worked against me was on one stage where you had to load up one slug, fire off, and then crawl through some obstacles. And when you got to your next firing point, you had to load up enough uh, birdshot or buckshot to engage your shotgun targets for that stage. The shotgun does not load click quickly in that manner. It's good that you have 14 rounds on top, and there was a stage there where that worked greatly to my advantage, uh, especially with two tubes where I could load one with slugs and one with bird. But uh, when you just have to load the slugs from empty or load the shells from empty, excuse me, now it's it's got a disadvantage to you there. I also equipped that shotgun with a uh, uh, Viking Tactics VTAC sling. Uh, had sling commonality, commonality across the weapons platforms and it really worked out really well. The backpack I chose to use was just a simple Miltech uh, medium sized backpack in multicam. It was good enough, it did the job, it held up throughout the uh, competition and uh, it held everything I need, no complaints really. It worked out really really well. The Hesco Invitational Zombie 3 gun is a great shoot. They host it at October of every year for 2021. The dates will be the 16th and 17th, which is your middle weekend of October. Go ahead and plan for it now and lock it in on your schedule. It's a blast. As far as 3-gun competitions go, it's not quite as serious as other ones, but that just allows the fun factor to go way up. I mean, you're killing zombies. What can't be fun about that? The stages are innovative, they're interesting, and they make you think about what you're doing. At the time of making this video, no one can predict what the ammo situation is going to be in a year based on the current situation that we are in now where ammo is almost as rare as gold and probably more valuable in some instincts or instances. Excuse me. Start saving up now. Normally, it's a high round count match. Uh, they did a good job of keeping it reasonable this year, realizing that everybody was having trouble accessing ammo and that any round you expended would be very hard to replace. And depending on the situation next year, uh, I'm sure they will do the same. If ammo's tight and if ammo is freed back up in a year's time, I'm sure the round count will go back up. And regardless if that happens or not, the match will be fun. Plan for it now, save up for it now, and start figuring out what gear you're going to use. We hope you found this edition of Pegasus Test helpful and informative. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and tune in for future videos on competitions.